All right, section 8B. This is the last section in chapter 1. So you guys are going to have a test over 1, 5. It might just be 1, 6 to 1, 8. I got to see. But just prepare for 1, 5 to 1, 8. But your test is next Thursday. It's a week from today. So we're going to move on to section 2.1 on Friday, Monday. But that will not be on your test. We're going to review Tuesday, Wednesday. Or, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're going to review and get ready for your test on Thursday. So this is the last section. We're talking about solving rational inequalities. So inequalities, we already know how to do. We know how to do our interval notation. We know whether we have brackets or parentheses. We know how to solve rationals. So we're just going to put it together now. All right, so the first thing you have to do is get the equation, your rational equation, less than <clears throat> or greater than zero. So move everything to the left, zero on the right. Then you're going to combine so you have only one fraction. Then we have to set the numerator and denominator to zero. Those are going to be our test points. And then we have to test. Okay, so it's a, it's a bit of a process, but we'll be okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this rational and say, okay, we have to have everything on one side and zero needs to be on the other, correct? So I'm going to move the one over. What you might want to get into the habit of doing, and you'll see this in a second, is you want to take the denominator. Let's talk about the denominator for a second. X plus 4. What is the only number that the denominator cannot be? Why can't the denominator be negative 4? Because if it is, it'll become 0. The reason why this is important, if you don't do this at the beginning, it's not a big deal, but you're going to have to see in a second. What kind of dots are you going to have in this problem? Close, which means it includes the value, right? But in this case, if negative 4 is one of our test points that we have to use, is it going to include negative 4? No. Why not? Because negative 4 would make the denominator what? Zero. Zero. So if you want to go ahead at the very beginning and just remind yourself, ooh, I can't, it can't be this number or that number, it might be a good idea, but you don't absolutely have to. So if I move this one over, I have 5 over x plus 4. Do you guys agree this becomes minus 1 over 1? Greater than or equal to 0? Okay, so now we treat this like <clears throat> a normal equation. So I have to get my denominators to be the same. What's the common denominator between x plus 4 and 1? Okay, so x plus 4. My first fraction has the x plus 4, correct? So I have 5. Then I have minus. What do I need to multiply the bottom and top by? x plus 4 on the bottom and x plus 4 on the top, okay? So I have minus x plus 4, and then we're greater than or equal to 0. Everybody with me? I didn't give myself much room. Okay, I'm going to go over here. It's, a, it's the whole, it's greater than or equal, the, the whole thing. So let's combine like terms. If I distribute here, I have 5 minus x, then what? Minus 4, which gives me what? Negative x plus 1. Okay, you can write it like that. You can write it the other way if you want. x plus 4. Greater than or equal to 0. <clears throat> Everybody agree? Okay, there we have, we have completed our, our, our rational inequality solving by getting everything to one side, common denominator, all that stuff. So now our next step is to set the numerator and denominator. What did I tell you? Equal to 0. So negative x plus 1 equals 0. X plus 4 equals 0, and we're going to solve. So this becomes negative X equals negative 1. So X equals what? 1. Okay, then I solve on this side. I move 4 over. This becomes X equals negative 4. Yeah? Okay, so those are our two test points. So I'm going to come over here, and we're going to graph, and then write our interval notation. So I have negative 4, and I have positive 1. Now, this is where you guys have to pay attention. What kind of dots at the beginning did you say you were going to have? Closed, because it's or equal to. This is a closed dot, but at negative 4, what is it? It's open. Why is it open at negative 4? What happens if x becomes negative 4? The denominator becomes what? Zero. Zero. Whenever you have a variable in the denominator, guys, that cannot be included in your solution set because it will make your denominator zero. Because if I put negative 4 in here, Hannah, what's negative 4 plus 4? If I put negative 4 right there, what's negative 4 plus 4? Right here. If 
I put it in for x, what's negative 4 plus 4? Zero. zero. What happens when you're, the denominator of a fraction is zero? No, it becomes undefined. You can't have that. <clears throat> so that's why it's not included in the solution set. So now we're going to pick where we shade. I'm going to pick zero. If zero makes my inequality true, then I should shade over it, correct? If zero does not make the inequality true, where do we shade? On the outsides, okay? So let's just pick zero and plug it in here. I have five over zero plus four. Is that greater than or equal to one? Is five over four greater than or equal to one? Yes, so I'm gonna shade right there. So how would I write my solution? What's my interval notation? Parenthesis negative four, comma one bracket. Why is it a parenthesis on negative four? You cannot include it because if you include that, your denominator becomes zero, then your rational becomes undefined. Does that make sense? So now that's all we're gonna do now, guys, every single time. We're gonna ask ourselves the same questions. First thing I'm gonna say, do I have everything on the left-hand side and it is set greater than or less than zero? Yes, okay, good. What number cannot be included in my solution set? Why not? Okay, x minus four cannot be zero. I cannot have four in my solution set. I'm just gonna make sure when I get to that point that it's not there. Everybody with? Okay, so now what's the next step? Since I don't have to get a common denominator and all that stuff. We're going to set what to zero? The x plus one, the numerator, and the denominator. So here I have x equals negative one, and here I have x equals four. You guys agree? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and solve. <coughs> negative one, zero, and four. What kind of dots do I have at negative one and four? Why are they both open? Because there's not an or equal to line underneath. Good. So let's check zero. If zero works, if it makes my inequality true, then I should shade over zero. If it doesn't work, I shade on the outsides, correct? All right, so let's plug in. If I have zero plus one over zero minus four, is that greater than zero? Is negative one fourth bigger than zero? No. So where do I shade? On the outsides. And then from left to right, how do I write my interval notation? Parenthesis, negative infinity two, negative one. U, four, two, infinity. Perfect. Is this really any different from anything we've done? No. It's just kind of pulling 12 different things all together in one spot. Questions? <clears throat> we okay? All right, let's go to... I mean, three. Just kidding. Again, you don't have to do this, especially since there's not an or equal to underneath, but I like to just remind myself, what can the denominator not be? Can't be what? Negative four over three. You don't want your denominator zero. So if, it's ne if X is negative four thirds, it's going to make your denominator zero. Just keep that in mind. So now let's go through the process. Do I have everything on one side and zero on the other? No. So I have to say, okay, 2x minus 1 over 3x plus 4 minus 4 over 1 less than 0. <clears throat> Same thing we've done a million times. I need a common denominator between 3x plus 4 and 1. Okay, if I multiply the bottom by 3x plus 4, I have to multiply the top by 3x plus 4. So I have 2x minus 1 minus, if I distribute this, 12x plus 16. Agreed? I had the minus outside. I didn't distribute it yet. If you want to, go ahead, you can. So I'm going to distribute here. If you wanted to distribute it, before you could. So 2x minus 1 minus 12x minus 16. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Combine all those terms. 2 and negative 12. Negative 10x. Good. Negative 1 and a negative 16. Minus 17 over 3x plus 4. Less than 0. 
All right, we've found <coughs> common denominator. We combine it all into one fraction. Now what's my next step? Set the numerator and denominator separately equal to equal to zero. So negative 10x minus 17 equals zero. 3x plus 4 equals zero. So on the left-hand side, when I solve, I have negative 10x equals 17, right? Negative 17 moves over. Now I divide both sides by negative 10, great. So I have x equals negative 17 over 10. That's fine. Right-hand side, what do I do with 4? Minus it, so 3x equals negative 4. Now what? We divide by 3, so x equals negative 4 thirds. Yeah? Okay, great, perfect, perfect. So now let's go ahead and throw this on a number line. Now, both of these are negative, so I know 0 is over here. Guys, <clears throat> which one's bigger, which one's smaller? That's what I just heard. Negative 17 over 10 is smaller. I knew what you meant by what you said, Ryder. So negative 17 over 10 here and negative 4 over 3 here. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. So let's talk about our graph. What kind of dots do I have at these two spots? Open. I knew that from the beginning because of the not or equal to. It's just less than. Why did I put that at zero? All right, I'm going to plug in zero because that just makes my life easy. The way that I have my picture drawn, if I plug in zero and it works, which way am I going to shade? In between the two dots or on the outside of them? On the outside of them, okay, so let's go, let's plug in. So I have negative 10 times 0 minus 17 over 3 times 0 plus 4. Negative 17 over 4, is that less than 0? Yes. That means this stuff over here works, and this stuff over here will work. If you want to check the left-hand side, you can, but you're either going to shade in the middle or on the outsides. So how would you write your interval notation? How would you write this interval notation, guys? Parenthesis, negative infinity to negative 17 over 10. Good. U, negative 4 thirds, comma, infinity. Perfect. How did you know, like, when you plugged it in, whether you had to shade it on the outside or inside? Is it different for each problem? Generally, you can go with, that's a good question. Generally, you can go with what the sign says, right? Less than, you would think on the inside. But if you notice here, our fraction is what? Negative. So in reality, what's happening to the inequality sign? If you divide it by negative, it would flip. So that's why with these kinds, because it's kind of hard to tell sometimes, I don't go by that. I always just try zero. If zero works, you should color where zero is. So if it's in between, it's going to be in the middle. If it's on the outside, it'll be both sides. <clears throat> that's the easiest, the easiest way to look at it. All right, where's the other one? Here it is. Okay. Again, go through the whole process, guys. Is this one rational on one side and zero on the other? No. So we got to get it to be that way. So I have 6 over 5 minus 3x. When I bring that 2 over, it becomes minus 2 over 1, less than or equal to 0. Now, looking at this, guys, what kind of dots should you have? Closed. But I have a denominator. I need to remember something is going to make my denominator zero. What is that value going to be? It's going to be x equals what? Five thirds. So if that's one of our test points, that's fine. I just cannot have a closed dot there. Does everyone understand that? Okay. Yes. So what's a common denominator between 1 and 5 minus 3x? So I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 5 minus 3x. So I have 5 minus 3x. I have 6x on top. Do you guys agree this is a negative 2? So if you want to distribute the negative here, what's negative 2 times 5? Minus 10. And then what's a negative 2 and a negative 3? Plus 6x. Good. So when we simplify that a little bit, what's 6 and negative 10? I have negative 4 plus 6x over 
5 minus 3x. And then my sign is less than or equal to 0. Now, Ariana asked a good question. Guys, and every other thing that we've done, remember whatever the sign said, less than, it was an and problem. But notice this fraction is what? Negative. So really and truly, it's going to divide by a negative 1, and your sign's going to do what? Flip. But don't worry about doing that. Just worry about following our steps and then shading with testing a point. So I'm going to set top and bottom equal to 0. 5 minus 3x equals 0. So I have negative 4 equals negative 6x. Divide both sides by negative 6. What's x equal? 2 thirds. Positive 2 thirds. Good. And then over here, I'm going to move 3x over. So 5 equals 3x and divide by 3. And x equals what? 5 thirds. Okay. Which one's bigger? 5 thirds. Okay. So 0, 2 thirds, and 5 thirds. Now, what kind of dots should I have at my spots? close. But what do I know I have to be careful of? The five-thirds. Can I include five-thirds in my solution? Nope, I cannot. Because if x equals five-thirds, the denominator becomes zero. So now, guys, think about this. We're going to plug in zero. If zero works, where on my number line am I going to shade? On the outsides or the inside? Outsides. Mm -hmm. So let's plug in 0 into our original. I have 6 over 5 minus 3 times 0. Is that less than or equal to 2? So 6 over, what's 5 minus 3? I mean 5 minus 0? 5. Is that less than or equal to 2? Yes. How many times is 5 going to 6? One time with a little bit left over. So 0 works. That means I'm going to color on the... Outsides. Bad color choice. Your two options are either going to be in between the two dots or on the outsides of them. If you want to check the other side just to make sure, you can. But what is my interval notation going to be here? Negative infinity to two-thirds bracket. Good. Union. Five-thirds to infinity. Perfect. <clears throat> Questions? All right, let's look at five. How's five a little different? They both have a denominator. How annoying. So I have two things I have to worry about. I have to make sure that x isn't zero. What else do I have to make sure x isn't? Negative two-thirds. Negative two-thirds. Where did Frank and I get negative two-thirds from? 3x plus 2 equals 0. You move the 2 over, it becomes negative. Divide by 3. There we go. All right? Now, again, you don't have to do that at the beginning, guys. It's just helpful, too. So now I'm going to say, okay, I need everything on one side. So negative 5 over 3x plus 2. Then I'm going to bring the 5x over. So minus 5 over x greater than or equal to 0. Again, we know how to solve rationals. We know how to figure this out. What is a common denominator going to be between... 3x plus 2, and x. 3x plus 2 and x, right? So the first fraction has the 3x plus 2. It's missing the x, correct? My second fraction has the x. It's missing the 3x plus 2. So multiply this. So no algebra comes in. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x, correct? Then I have negative 15x minus 10. Do you guys agree? Could I combine anything here? Yes or no? Okay, so negative 20x minus 10. And then over my denominator of x times 3x plus 2. Is greater than or equal to 0. Yeah? Angel. Because we're not setting it equal to zero and solving. If it was equal to zero, then yes, it would be. But we're not setting it equal to zero and solving. We're just finding our test points. Now, by doing this at the, at the beginning, are you guys already solving the denominator every time? 
Do you see that? Okay. If you do it at the beginning, you're already getting some of the step out of the way. If not, no big deal. Set the numerator equal to zero. So negative 20x minus 10 equals zero, right? Then I have what? x equals zero. And then I have 3x plus 2 equals zero. So I already know that this is x equals zero. And I already know this is x equals negative two-thirds, correct? Okay. So over here, negative 20x equals 10. What happens? Divide both sides by negative 20. So x equals negative 1 half, all right? So how many test points do we have now? We have three, all right? Does that make our problem any harder? No. Just makes my number line a little bigger, right? So I have zero. Well, let me put it over here. I have zero. And then where does negative one half go and where does negative two thirds go? Say it again. Negative here, one half, and then negative two thirds. Okay, agreed. Now again, guys, <clears throat> we're gonna have to figure out where stuff is and what our points and stuff look like. What, at the beginning, what kind of a sign do we have? Greater than or equal to. Okay, so that means we should have what kind of dots? Closed. So I agree we should have a closed at one half. But what should be at negative two-thirds and zero? Why? Because they're not included. Why are they not included? Good. Because if x were one of those two values, your denominator would become zero. Perfect. Now, is this one a little bit of a pain in the butt? Yes, because you have to do what? You got to check. You got to check fractions, and that's not always our favorite thing in the world. But you can kind of, sometimes you can kind of make your life a little easier. So think about this. Let's, let's try one. If one works, then I know I'm not going to shade in between negative one half and zero. Let's just try one. Let's plug in one from the very beginning. So I have negative five over three times one plus two. Is that greater than or equal to 5 over 1? You guys good? Yes, I just try to use the easiest ones possible. So negative 5 over 5, is that greater than or equal to 5? Is negative 1 greater than or equal to 5? No. So this section doesn't work there. You guys okay with that? Let's rule out what doesn't work. Where else can we try? What's another easy number to plug in? Okay, let's try negative one. Let's try negative one. If I plug in negative one, I have negative five over three times negative one plus two. Is that greater than or equal to five over negative one? Well, this is negative five over what? <laughs> <laughs> negative 1. Is that greater than or equal to negative 5 over 1? No. Is 5 greater than or equal to negative 5? Yes. Simplify, guys, so you don't mess yourself up. So this stuff over here works. That's good to know. So where else can you guys deduce will work. With zero after, in between. In between where? One, negative one half. Perfect, and zero. You're never gonna have this, guys, where it's here and then here, and it's, it's not gonna be like that. It's always gonna be like it, like there's gonna be a gap. When it's not specifically in between one or the other, there's always gonna be a gap. Now, you might get to a problem like this and run out of time and think, oh, I don't know. If you wanna check, go ahead, but there's some of these you're gonna have to just Move along, because you'll never have enough time to do everything. These are hard. I know that. I know that. How do I write my interval notation here? Negative infinity two. Negative two thirds. Then what happens? Parenthesis, first of all. Then what? A U. Bracket. Negative one half. Parenthesis. Very good. 
That's a hard question. Not a hard question mathematically, but it's a hard question to go through and see, oh, why is it hard? Because there's fractions involved. It's a pain in the butt. But use some reasoning skills. Use some like, okay, I can plug in positive one. I can plug in negative one. And then you can kind of eliminate some stuff. Makes your life a little easier. All right, same kind of concept here. One more hard one and then an easy one to end. What's the El Problemo? Fractions. Fractions, yes, agreed. And they're on opposite sides, right? So let's move them. I have 1 over x minus 3 minus 3 over 2x plus 1 less than or equal to 0. I already know there's two values that cannot be included. What are those two values that just cannot be included? Positive 3 and negative 1 half. Great. Solve the denominators. x minus 3 equals 0. You get x cannot be 3. 2x plus 1 equals 0. You get x cannot be negative 1 half. Perfect. Now, this problem appears hard, but it's actually easy because it's real easy to see what the common denominator is. What's the common denominator for these two? 2x plus 1 and? x minus 3. So just figure out what each fraction has. What's the other one's missing? This one needs the 2x plus 1. Agreed? And this one needs the x minus 3. So your two denominators are x minus 3, 2x plus 1. And then your numerator. 1 times 2x is 2x. 1 times 1 is 1. Agreed? Then I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative 3. So negative 3 times x is minus 3x. Negative 3 and negative 3 is plus 9. So let's simplify a little bit. 2x and a negative 3x is negative x. 1 plus 9 is 10. And then you have your denominator of x minus 3 and 2x plus 1. And that's all less than or equal to 0. Now think about this. Less than. We want to think that it's going to be where when you shade? Less than. All in between, right? But since that leading, we're leading with a negative, it's actually going to be an or. But since we have three test points, we've got to figure out where exactly those things are. A little bit of a pain, I understand. So I need to set negative x plus 10 equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. And 2x plus 1 equals 0. We've already done these two already. x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 half. We already had that figured out. <clears throat> so here I have negative x equals negative 10. So what's x equal? 10. All right. So let's put our test points on. Let's figure out where stuff exists, where it doesn't. So I have negative 1 half, 0, 3, and 10. Now this one's a little easier to check. How come? Do we have whole numbers that we can pick in each interval? Absolutely. Let's talk about where those intervals exist. What kind of a dot do I have at 10? Closed. Very good. It's or equal to. What kind of a dot do I have at 3? Open. And what do I have at negative 1 half? Open. Fantastic, guys. How come? Because it's not included. So let's try our easiest one in the world to, to test. 0. Let's plug in 0. See what happens. So if I have 1 over 0 minus 3, is that less than or equal to 3 over 2 times 0 plus 1? So I have negative 1 third. Is that less than or equal to 3 over 1? Yes. So look where we can shade in here. So you know you're probably not going to shade where? To the left of that, right? And you're probably not going to shade to the immediate right. Let's check 10. Should 10 work? Yes. Do you want to check 11 to see if it's a little above? Uh, you, that's fine if you want. Do you want to check 12? It doesn't matter to me. Let's check 11. So I have, let me go up here so I can see it. 1 over 11 minus 3. Is that less than or equal to 3 over... 2 times 11 plus 1. So 1 eighth, is that less than or equal to 3 over what? 23. Is 1 eighth smaller than 3 over 23? <laughs> 
Yes, it is. So then we're going to shade where? To the right. Again, think about what the hard part is. You guys just did that whole problem and where everybody gets dumped. I don't know which fraction is bigger or smaller, right? So what does my interval notation look like here? Parenthesis. Negative one half, comma. Three. Parenthesis. Union. Bracket. Ten, comma. Perfect. Very good. <clears throat> you got it? Good for you. All right, now we're going to end on an easy peasy one. Is it on the next slide? Oh, this is like a relaxation one on this one, right? What's the problem? It's a fraction. Is everything on one side, zeros on the other? No. So we have to say, okay, 2x minus 7 over x minus 5. I'm going to pull the 3 over, and that's going to be less than or equal to 0. What can I already say? Oh, gosh, x cannot be what number? 5. Because what happens if x is 5? Your denominator becomes 0. Great. All right, guys, common denominator between 1 and x minus 5. So I'm going to multiply this by x minus 5 and here by x minus 5. So I have 2x minus 7. I'm going to take this negative 3 and distribute it. So it's negative 3x plus 15 over our x minus 5. We combine like terms. What's 2 and a negative 3? Negative x. Negative 7 and a positive 15. Say it again. That's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> negative 7 and positive 15. It is. I just, I wasn't quite sure that I heard that. Now, less than or equal to zero. If you guys want to go back to our less than. So we're thinking, oh, we're probably going to color in the middle. But look what happens. This leads with a negative, right? So what does that actually do to our sign? It flips it. But again, if you don't see that, that's not a big deal. We'll figure that out when we go to graph. So I have negative x plus 8 equals 0. x minus 5 equals 0. So negative x equals negative 8. So x equals 8. And then here I have x equals 5. So I have two places on my graph. 0 is here, 5 is here, and 8 is here. <clears throat> what kind of a dot do I have at 5? It is open. What do I have at 8? It is closed. I know it says or equal to, but we cannot include 5 because what happens when we include 5? Our denominator becomes 0. So what's an easy number to choose? Let's plug in 0. So I have 2 times 0 minus 7 over 0 minus 5. Is that less than or equal to 3? Is 7 over 5 less than or equal to 3? Yes. How many times is five going to seven? Once. <laughs> that's that's the, the fractions are stumping us. So does zero work? Yes. That means I'm going to color over here and I'm going to color over here. So what is my interval notation? Parenthesis. Negative infinity. Five. Parenthesis. U. Bracket. Eight. Bam. Good job. Good job. Okay, I will move the due date for the homework um, to Monday morning, but don't wait till Sunday night, guys. Just do it. Do it, do it, do it.